Hi, how you doing? Justin here. Today I'm going to explain to you how to read guitar tab. Probably the most common form of guitar notation these days, and for good reason. It's, I think, in most cases, it's the most effective way of writing down music for guitar. So, first things first, in normal guitar notation you have six horizontal lines, and these represent the six strings on the guitar. A seven-string guitar tab would have seven lines, and a bass guitar with only four strings would have only four lines. So, the lowest line is the thickest string on the guitar, and the top line is the thinnest string. Now, there's a few different ways to remember this. I think the easiest one is to think of treble and bass, top and bottom. So the treble notes, the high notes, are at the top, and the bass notes, the low notes, are at the bottom. Sometimes you'll find tab is written on the actual tab itself with the T at the top, T-A-B, treble and bass. Okay, top and bottom, treble and bass. That's the easiest way to think of it. You can also, if you kind of lay your guitar over like that, you can think of it as like the, the thicker string will be closest to you, like the bottom and the, the top string, it will be furthest away, like the top of the tab. That's probably the easiest way to think about it. On these lines, you're gonna see some numbers, and those numbers are gonna tell you where to put a finger on the guitar. Now, it doesn't tell you which finger, it just tells you where to put a finger. So if you see a five on the top line of a tab, that's telling you to play a note at the fifth fret of the thinnest string. Okay, so we just think first fret, second fret, third fret, fourth fret, fifth fret's this note, but it doesn't tell you whether you use your first finger, second finger, third finger, or fourth finger, or your thumb, or your nose, or whatever it is. It doesn't tell you anything like that. It just tells you where to put a finger. And the decision as to which finger plays the note, you just kind of have to deduce yourself by looking at the notes that come before and the notes that come after. A little bit of logic, particularly when it comes to chords and stuff like that, but it doesn't really give you that information. Sometimes you'll find extra information above or below the tab, which might give you some clues, but it's not there on general internet tabs that you might find around the place. Now, you might also encounter some zeros on the lines. Now, a zero looks like an O, and you can think of it as standing for an open string. So you play a string with no fingers on it. Let's say that on the second to the top line you see a zero, you would play that the second string open. Okay, so no fretting fingers involved on that at all. You're just playing the open second string. That would be a zero on the second from top line. If you saw a zero on the bottom line, that would be playing the thickest string open with no fingers on it. My fingers are just sitting there muting the strings just in case you saw my hand and was going, oh, he's playing something. No, I'm just playing there, the thickest string by itself. Now you're also going to see notes written above and below each other, and when notes are on the same vertical plane, you play them at the same time. So let's go back to our first example. We see a five on the thinnest string on the top line. That'll be the thinnest string. And we also see a five on the second from top string. So that would mean that we're going to play the fifth fret on the thinnest string, and as well, we would play the fifth fret on the second string. So we would play those two notes together. Now, when you see a whole chord, you might have several notes. Well, not several, actually. You can't have several. You can have up to six notes, more commonly less than six. So let's look at a G chord as an example, a uh, regular kind of bog-standard three-fingered G. Uh, a G in a tab form would have a three on the bottom line, a two on the next line up. The middle two lines would both be zero. The second to top line would also be zero, and there'd be a three on the very top line. So you'd have, starting from the thicker string, the lowest line of the tab, you'd have three, two, zero, 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 three. Now I've played that one at a time, but when they're all vertically, on the same vertical plane, you would play them at the same time. Okay, so it's a really, really common thing. You often get things like you'll have one note played by itself, and then, say, three notes played together. And then the same thing. That kind of light is very, very, very common. Also common to have little bits where you have two notes played together in a solo or whatever. But it's really important that you understand the notes on a vertical plane, on the same vertical plane, are played at the same time. So it's all well and good knowing where to put your fingers, but what about the rhythm? Where's the rhythm shown in tab? Well, actually, for regular ASCII tab, which is the kind of the most common form that you find on the internet, I'll talk about a bit more about that in a second, 
there's no rhythm information. You have to use your ears. Now, that's actually not necessarily a bad thing because if you're learning a song, you should be listening to it. That's really, really super important. If you're not listening to a song that you're learning, you're probably not going to do a very good job of learning it. Okay, so really important that you listen a lot to the songs that you're learning by tab. It'll also help you making from making mis really bad mistakes or clumsy mistakes where somebody's accidentally put the wrong number on the tab and you just play it blindly without listening. That's not going to lead you to a happy place either. So really important that you do a lot of listening. In kind of professional tab and a lot of the tab that you'll see on my website, I have the tab underneath traditional notation above. And the traditional notation, like the regular dots, what normal people see as sheet music, that gives you the rhythm as well. So someone like me who reads regular notation as well as tab, I can be looking at the tab to find where to play the note. And then the, the regular dot notation will give me the rhythmic information. Sometimes you can get tab with rhythm on it, but that's a little more rare. And we'll talk about that more in a second. So for you now, when you're learning your tunes, if you've got a tab, you've got to listen to the original recordings to soak up the rhythm. It's really a key point that you need to realize. It's not going to give you that rhythmic information in the tab. Now, an interesting debate that you often see around is whether it's worth learning traditional notation for guitar. Now, I can read regular notation. I've done a degree in, well, I never finished it actually, but most of a degree in classical guitar, so I can read music pretty comfortably. Uh, but I prefer generally guitar tab. And the main reason is that in traditional notation, the same note can be played lots of different ways. So if you look at a note, the note E, which is the top space of uh, regular notation, that's played like this on guitar, the open thinner string. But it can also be played the fifth fret of the second string, the ninth fret of the third string, the 14th fret of the fourth string, the 19th fret of the fifth string, and the 24, uh, 24th fret, if I had a 24th fret on this guitar, of the thicker string. That would all be written the same in regular notation. So that's not very helpful for guitar if it doesn't tell you where to play the note. Now, sometimes it is. Let's say if I'm learning a saxophone solo, a Charlie Parker saxophone solo, I don't care where whoever wrote the transcription played the note. I just want to know that Charlie Parker played the note E. And I want to make the decision as to where I play it on the guitar. Whereas if I'm learning guitar specific material, blues solo, maybe the transcribers spent the time to figure out where it was played on the neck, in which case tablature, regular tablature, where it shows you where it is on the neck is actually loads better. Now, when I'm doing my own transcriptions and working out songs myself, I write in tab. I write by hand in tab, and usually I'll write the rhythm above the tab because I think the rhythmic material is really important. And it's something I would encourage you to do if you get into transcribing and working out songs yourself is learning how to write rhythm as well. So let me talk you through again those different types of tab that you're likely to see. The first one called ASCII tab is the type that you most commonly find on the internet. It's made of little dashes to make up the lines and then you pop the numbers in. Uh, there are a few different variations that you see around to, to write down things like hammer-ons or string bends, but I don't really think there's a, a definitive standard around. It does depend on which website you're going to or which particular author you're looking at. Um, it's very, very common, very rare is there any rhythmic information, but again, you sometimes see people have written like a count like one e and a two e and or something like that above it just to try and help out on a difficult rhythmic passage. But most of the time you get don't get that and you just have to listen. Now, as I mentioned, if you buy a tablature book from a professional music publisher, you're likely to see the guitar tab with traditional notation upstairs. And that's really, really helpful because that way you look at the tab to find where the note is and you can look at the traditional notation also to see what the note is if you read uh, read music, but also to get that rhythmic information if you understand how to read rhythms, which again, you know, I really think learning to read rhythms and understand how rhythm is written down is a super, super valuable skill for guitar players. It'll improve you in lots more ways than just being able to read a tab. Um, and I, I mentioned that the other type that I use most of the time, which is I write down in tab and I just write the rhythm, like the stems of the rhythm, but without the dots on top of my tab. So for me, that tells me exactly where I should play the note. I recognize what the note is straight away and it gives me that rhythmic information. I think that can be really super valuable as well. Now, the last thing I need to mention is that there are literally hundreds of different techniques that can be written down in guitar tab. And I don't recommend you try and learn them all at the beginning. You should learn them as you encounter them. So if you're a real beginner, you're probably not likely to be doing string bending. This, this sort of 
You're not likely to encounter that as a beginner, so you don't need to learn how to read and write a string bend. But when you encounter string bending, if you start playing blues guitar, you're going to encounter it. You need to, at that point, to understand how to read it and write it. There are pages on my site where you'll get detailed analysis of each of the different symbols and how to perform each one of the techniques. But it really is endless. So, tapping with these fingers on the guitar neck, uh, playing where you don't pick, where you play. You're not doing anything with this hand. There's all sorts of different techniques that you're going to encounter. Again, there's, there is a kind of a standard now for, for uh, big music publishers. They tend to use the same sort of thing, but online again, lots of people choose to write stuff different ways. I tend to use the main publisher kind of standard stuff because I, I work with big publishers and I write my own books, so it kind of makes sense to me if, if they're all done the same way. But again, occasionally, if I find it's going to be clearer to write it a different way, I will, because that's kind of the point. For me, if I'm writing something down, I want you to be able to understand it really well, more than I want it to adhere to any particular standard. So I think that's what other teachers feel as well, and perhaps why there isn't like a, a dead set standard for writing down guitar tab. So I hope this helps you understand guitar tab in whatever form you find it online. Please do subscribe to my YouTube channel if you dig what I do, and remember there's well over a thousand lessons. I think we're up to 1600 free lessons now over on justinguitar.com, so if you're not a registered user, go and check it out. There'll be some extra downloads, some blank tab paper that you can download to practice writing tab, and some more explanations on the website. There'll be a link in the description on a YouTube video if you're already on the site. Just scroll down the page and you'll find a whole heap more fun stuff. So I'll see you for plenty more guitar lessons very soon. You take care of yourselves. Bye-bye.